church. This is Because He Lives. Come on.
Hey Concord, thanks for joining us for worship today. If this is your first time worshiping with us, please text WELCOME to 865-302-3616. Next Sunday, October 20th, is Offering at the Altar. Be sure to pick up a bag with requested items on your way out today and bring it back next Sunday. You can place your offering at the altar or on the silver food pantry racks. We really need those donations as we expect to serve more than 650 families in November and December. Volunteer signups are now open for Trunk or Treat. Gather your small group, family, or friends to decorate a trunk and help us host our community. There will be a friendly competition for best decorated trunk. You can register today by visiting concordunited.org slash events. Not able to help the day of the event? You can donate candy from now until trunk or treat by placing your bags of candy in any of the donation boxes located around our church. Christmas is coming. Help support the Concord United Preschool by sharing some holiday joy. Purchase a wreath, centerpiece, or garland for yourself, family, clients, holiday hosts, and neighbors, or send fresh evergreens to family and clients anywhere in the U.S. The proceeds from each purchase will go to support the preschool. Order today by visiting concordunited.org slash events. Thanks for joining us for worship. We hope you'll take advantage of these opportunities to share Christ serve others, and grow in faith. Good morning. Yes. Yes. More enthusiasm. Good morning. Great. And y'all don't have the excuse. Even if you stayed up to see the game last night, it's, it's 11 o'clock. It's okay. You should be... Isn't it hard to go to sleep after games like that? Or any game? It's just me. Um... It must just be me. I loved how they said friendly competition. Is that like contradictory or is that possible? We hope that you will get involved with Trunk or Treat. If it is your first time here, we want to say a special welcome to you. Believe it or not, we all had our first time of walking in the door or showing up, however it is. We are glad you're here. If it is your first time, we encourage you to text welcome to 865-302-3616. It's a way for us to get to know you, you to get to know us, and there are no obligations if you text in. We just um, want to provide a way for you to connect with us. Everyone should have received a connection card when you came in today. If you will be sure to complete that in its entirety, both the front and the back, um, the prayer, um, concordunited.org slash pray or put your prayer request. We appreciate the opportunity to be in prayer together with you and for you, celebrations and challenges that we are experiencing. One of the things we've been doing recently is we have been listening to folks share their stories. Each one of us have a story about how God has interacted with us. And even if we don't think we have one, Hopefully, as we listen, we see how God has been um, working in our lives. Today, we have the famous Bill Powers, who is going to share his story with us. Hey, Concord, Bill Powers here. Just wanted to share a little message with y'all. Um, I've been to this church for 12, 13 years, a minute or two, and um, didn't know a lot about God, didn't know a lot about God when I got here. I just know there was a God. And I've learned about Jesus since I've been here, you know, and i uh, learned quite a bit about the Bible through the, through all the uh, congregation. Uh, I'm in a Sunday school class here, love the people in the Sunday school. I just really love the people in the church because they met me where I was at in life and they accepted me where I was at in life when I got here. I've worked here for 10 years this year and um, just really, uh, you know, I'm learning to be, that Jesus wants me to be like him and live the way he would have me to live. And that's the way I try to do today. I try to spread the love um, because that's what I was given and that's what I try to give to other people. Um, <clears throat> I'm not always real good at it, but I try to be good at it. And uh, that's what I that's what I strive for in life today is just to live like Jesus would have me to live. And the Holy Spirit lives in me because I know there's that's the only way I would have ever been able to do it because I'm really 
wasn't really, really good with people until I got around you, the people in this church, you know, the uh, the pastors. I've been through like three pastors since I've been here and uh, had two of them retire. Actually, I've been through like four, but they've, they've retired. Two of them have retired, two of them are still here. And uh, they've taught me a lot about Jesus, taught me a lot about loving people like Jesus would. And um, that's what I really love to do because I really love people today. Uh, I've found that I'm really a people person and uh, just, uh, like what we do here at the church, you know, they uh, they welcomed to me when I got here, and that's what I try to do today is welcome my other people in our congregation. Uh, I'm in a Sunday school class today with a, a bunch of good people, and uh, you know, I get to learn more about Jesus as I go through the day. And uh, you know, I actually I read the Bible today and uh, try to take as much as I can in. And the Holy Spirit's really worked in my life, and uh, I'm really grateful for that today because uh, I'm a lot better person than I ever have been, and I know that, that gets better. Um, and uh, that's about all I got today. Thank you. <laughs> I am honored I'm one of the two that are still here. Um, so, and, and when I think of Bill, like Bill, the things Bill does on a Sunday morning, make sure the lights are on and things are taken care of. And Bill and I have great conversations before y'all ever show up. And I'm just grateful for that, just the relationships we get to have and that I'm one of the pastors that is still here. Um, so um, what a gift. Each and every one of us ha have our story about how God is working in our lives and we we appreciate those who are sharing it. If you notice, we had the cards up out there on the out when you walk out to the right um, about what we're thankful for. Just multiple ways for us to express what God is doing in our lives. And another way we get to express that is through our giving. Our giving to God, which happens to come um, to this congregation. We started a couple of weeks ago our stewardship campaign towards funding for 2025. And as always, you all are so gracious with your gifts, um, not only of time, but of finances. If you've not been able to contribute and you want to towards the um, 2025, there are cards as you exit. Um, and I think there's a QR code. Yes, there is. I'm just impressed I know what a QR code is. Yes. QR code if you want to use that. And as always, remembering that our giving of our resources is an act of worship. And there are four ways we can do that here. There are the boxes as you leave. There is text online or you could go snail mail and mail it and it still works. So just remembering that all of those aren't, it isn't another thing we do. It is the things we do as we get to worship our God. Let's now uh, offer up our prayer to God as an act of worship. Let's pray. Lord, our rock and our redeemer, um, we've shown up today and there's stuff going on. There's stuff going on in our world and in our nation and in our community and in our own lives. Life doesn't stop, it's in session. And so we thank you that we have this space in this time where we get to worship you just like we do each and every day, each and every hour. That our, our lives are an act of worship of you. Move amongst us. Take what we offer up, Lord, and multiply it for your kingdom. Keep us out of the way. May you be shown and glorified. Into your hands, may your will, let our will be done. Amen. Say anything and not 
morning again. Good to see y'all are still here. That's a good sign. 
I don't know about the people, hopefully y'all stayed online or you'll be back soon. So glad that you are here today. We have some youth students, part of our student ministry and adults who were here at nine o'clock and they left at 10 o'clock and through Operation Backyard, they have gone to South Knoxville to work on a wheelchair ramp. Some of you all were here for the apple crop drop. Um, I won't ask you to raise your hand, but just give me a nod. So anybody here do the apple crop drop? Hmm, couple of nods, that's a good sign. Some of you all have been involved in the hurricane relief, the flood relief. Just to update you all on that, we are waiting for our next guidance about where we can go serve, but you can still give to the flood relief. We know this is going to be a long process and that resources are needed. So you can do that in the four ways we give and just be sure that you put, put flood relief. So I have a question for those who have been involved in the opportunities I just noted, or maybe you over the past week or two have been involved in other ways of serving others. And I've got some questions for you. Did you ask anyone as you were serving what their political affiliation was? Did you ask them their socioeconomic status? Did you ask them how much education they had? Did you ask them what part of town they lived in so you could size up who they were based on their address? Everybody said no, that's a good sign, right? And yet we live in a culture in a society where we divide ourselves up, where there are people that we just don't agree with. And like that's, if we think we're gonna agree with everyone, like maybe that's what you get out of this message. That's probably not gonna happen. Even within your whole own house. Like do certain people um, wash and dry the clothes and fold them better than other people at your house? Laughter is a sign of understanding. First time I saw my husband load a dishwasher, I was like, it's your job now. Because that's an engineer just did that, not me. Um, and he's been very gracious. Now, we, there are things that we disagree. We don't all line up on everything. And yet, are you overwhelmed or are you tired of the rhetoric of just the divisiveness that bombards us, what feels like all the time. So we're in the midst of a series about loving one another, and today is about loving one another when we disagree. If you feel like you need to go to the restroom and just keep on going, now is your time. I encourage you to stay. Because... Jesus and the gospel are radical. They are uncomfortable. And maybe over the next few minutes, we may become a little uncomfortable. And I pray that is the Holy Spirit. Let us go to God right now and pray. Lord, our creator and our savior, there's a lot we disagree about. And we know you didn't create us to all think exactly alike. Lord, move amongst us. However it is that we need to see you and be moved by you today. And maybe in this area of loving one another. Lord, speak through me, to me, and despite of me. In your holy name, amen. We are in the midst of a series and we have been intentional that the series in October and November is about loving one another. We figure we need to have a foundation about how it is that we live in our society, but also how we live in our relationships. And it's just not limited to October and November. It is a way of being. It is a way of being. Last week we started with a scripture that is foundational to who we are. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna look at what happens when we love those we disagree with. 
I recently was in a conversation and the person said to me, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to be friends with those people who are voting that way when this is all done. And I'm like, I mean, I'm sure there's several of us in the room. They're like, well, I could relate to that. And then there are others of us that maybe it's hard to relate to. But what happens when we love those who disagree with us and what does that look like? And what we use to undergird this series is a reading from John 13, 34 through 35. It is just after Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. He says, I, I, there's a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you. You see, we love out of how we're loved. Like, I don't know about you all, but loving just out of who I am, it's, it's, it's a small, small reserve to come from. But loving out of how deeply we are loved by God, that's another thing. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Must. It's in there. It isn't like if you've got time on the side or if they're good to you, then you can love them back. It says, the scripture says, Jesus said, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That's how we'll be known as Jesus followers, is if we love one another. That's it. There are other things, I'm sure, but Jesus says that they will know us by how we love one another. How we love one another, including those we disagree with. In the scripture reading that we have today, the story that we look at about loving one another when we disagree is a story that many of us may be familiar with. It's called the Good Samaritan. It's a story of different people that they didn't necessarily agree, and yet we see that this is a story that Jesus talks to us about loving one another when we disagree. You can find the reading in Luke 10, starting with the 25th verse, and I will read it. And um, here we go. On one occasion, an expert in the law, and remember when it says expert in the law, that when we think about the context of this story, this was an expert in the Jewish law and tradition. Like this expert knew all the commandments, knew knew what was said in the Torah, in in the Hebrew Bible. He knew what was expected of him as someone who was an expert in the Jewish law. He stood up to test Jesus. Oh boy, here we go. This is exciting. Teacher, he asked, and here's his his first question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus, what is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? Well, of course he knew what the law said, He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. That is found in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. He's quoting the law. That is what he must do to inherit eternal life. Jesus says, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. So if you ever asked someone a question and they gave you an answer and you wanted more information, some more details, Maybe I don't understand. The law expert, you have, or Jesus, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But he, the law expert, wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus a second question. And who is my neighbor? If I've got to love my neighbor, I need to know who that is. Within the cultural context of the Jewish culture, He would have known who his neighbor was, but he's asking to be sure. So Jesus replies, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away. 
leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side, but a Samaritan. And for those who would have been hearing this for the first time, the use of Samaritan would have been a radical inclusion into the list of people who stopped by. So the Samaritan came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave him to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber, the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus said, go and do likewise. Do you hear the man? Do you hear the legal expert? He's looking for a loophole. He is looking for a loophole of who he doesn't have to. To love, who he doesn't, who isn't his neighbor. He said, Who is my neighbor? But maybe he was really saying, Who is not my neighbor? Are we looking for the loophole in loving one another? Who do I not have to love? Who is it that comes to mind when you're like, That sounds great. I love Jesus, but surely he did not mean fill in the blank. Who is it? Who's our loophole? Who is it that we're like, I love this, love one another. I've got the magnet and the sticker and the sign. But who is it that I don't have to love? And so we could think of these broad groups. We could think politically. We can, we can even talk about our opposing teams that maybe we don't love really well in the moment of competition because often it's not friendly. But, but there are those people in our lives that we do know, that we may be related to, that we may work with, that we may go to church with. Do we really have to love everyone and about the, what about those we disagree with? And so we return to this concept of the word love, about how in this context, the word love, whether it's in John 13 or it is here in Luke 10, that the word love means agape love. That is an unconditional, sacrificial love that is evidenced by the cross. That is evidenced by the cross. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who was obviously a huge, played a huge role in the civil rights movement. You know, his training was pastor, preacher. He was a preacher's kid. And if you listen to any of his speeches or you read them, you can see the role that his training and his skills as a preacher played in. He preached a sermon called The Experiment of Love. And what he did is he talked about what agape love is. And in multiple speeches and sermons, he references the story of the Good Samaritan. It's not just one, but it's multiple. But this is what he says about agape love. It is a love in which the individual seeks not his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Agape does not begin by discriminating between worthy and unworthy people or any qualities people possess. It begins by loving others for their sakes. It is an entirely neighbor regarding concern for others, which discovers the neighbor in every man it meets. Agape springs from the need of the other person. Agape love last several times I've read the story of the prodigal, the prodigal son, of the Good Samaritan, there's something I can't unsee about it. It just, every time, it just comes up. 
And it's this part about all three of them. Every time I start this, I feel like I'm to start a joke. But the priest, the Levite, and the Samaritan. <laughs> all three of them see the man injured. All three of them. It wasn't like the priest was too busy doing his job that he didn't see. They all three saw. They saw the injured man. You see, love is more than seeing. Because seeing is often limited by our preconceived ideas, our fears, and our judgments. Now, if you spend any time in church, you've ever heard a sermon on the Good Samaritan or you have been in a Sunday school class, you've probably heard different beliefs about why the priest and the Levite didn't stop. Based on the information we're given, they were going from Jerusalem to Jericho. They were going down. It's like 850 feet from Jerusalem down to Jericho over an 18-mile distance. They were probably coming from the temple, and you may have heard it said that they didn't stop because if they had, it would have made them unclean. Like there are these reasons that we see but don't stop. They can be our preconceived ideas or maybe our prejudices about why people don't deserve us to stop, why people we disagree with don't need to be loved. Maybe it's our fears. Maybe it's our fears. Maybe it's something we've been told about groups of people. Maybe it's something we've experienced with people. And that's our judgments and our criticisms of each other. I don't know about you all, but everybody doesn't do it the way they should. Oh, I'm the only one. We, we get these judgments on each other about how we interact with each other. And so we see each other and we don't stop. One of the gifts as being a preacher is the sermon works on you the week before. For you all, hopefully it works on you the week after. The Holy Spirit. One of the things I noticed this past week or this past week or two is a number of times I saw people saw things going on, and I didn't stop. And there were some legitimate things, right? That wasn't, my, that wasn't my purpose of being in that location. I didn't have time. I needed to get somewhere else. Like someone else is going to come and help, right? I can't be the only one that saw them. But yet we see and we don't stop. And it can be a variety of reasons, good reasons, or it could be just reasons that are rooted in our prejudgments of each other. The fact that Jesus said that it was the Samaritan that stopped was radical. Because the Jews and the Samaritans hated each other. Think about that. That's who stopped. If you were in that original audience, that would have been earth shattering that he, he said it. But he said it, and he says it to us as well. You see, the thing about stopping, it requires effort, time, and putting aside our old ideas. And you know, I don't know about you all, but when I have to stop, maybe I have to stop and listen to someone, like maybe I don't want to listen. Maybe I just want to talk. And yet, loving one another including those we don't see eye to eye with, includes stopping. Stopping. Maybe stopping talking. And let's be honest. There are people that have done harm in our lives, that have injured us, that have caused harm, that have caused harm to other groups and other people. And I'm like, Jesus, you, did you know them when you were talking about this? Because I got some questions. And yet, what I see in Jesus is that we start where we are. Maybe our loving one another, loving others who we disagree with, means that we stop talking about them to others. Maybe it means we stop posting about them on social media. I love our passive aggressiveness on social media. Maybe it's that we start praying for them. Maybe 
that's what loving one another, what loving those we disagree with, maybe it's that we start praying. Maybe it's that we become willing. God, I don't understand what is going on over there. But I believe you are God of all of us. And I'm going to start praying. I got introduced to this prayer that's referred to as the sick man's prayer. It's found in the primary source for the 12 steps. It's found actually in the fourth step. It's called the sick man's prayer. And this is how it goes. Though we did not like their symptoms and the way these disturbed us, they, like ourselves, were sick too. We ask God to help us show them the same tolerance, pity, and patience that we would cheerfully grant a sick friend. When a person offended us, we said to ourselves, this is a sick man. How can I be helpful to him? God, save me from being angry. Thy will be done. And what we see in that is that it is about spiritual sickness. Like we can look at each other and see when someone is physically sick, yet many of us have been or currently are spiritually sick. And this prayer is that we begin to pray for others. That we begin to pray for those that we disagree with. It's not permission giving. It's not saying they're right. It's that we live a life based on our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we begin to pray for others. Or we pray for the willingness to pray for those we disagree with. It's fascinating. The the first question the law expert asked was, how do I inherit eternal life? The second question is, Who is my neighbor? And then Jesus, we see at the end that Jesus answers who is his neighbor this way. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him? Like there's no identifying characteristics of who the neighbor is. It's about who who acted as a neighbor. You see, we get wrapped up in the who and miss the what. We get wrapped up in all these identifying characteristics of who people are and we miss that at the root of this is the action of mercy. The action of mercy. And then Jesus says, he doesn't say, now here are all your neighbors. He says, go and do likewise. It's the what. It's the what. Not the who. It's a powerful thing to consider. It doesn't mean there's another thing on our list to do. It doesn't mean we search out serving opportunities, which you can do that. But it doesn't mean it's something else on our to-do list. It means it's a way of being. And this is the image that has come up in my mind time and time again as I have thought about this reading and this topic, is I just keep seeing the cross. I just keep seeing the image of the cross and our Savior on the cross and his blood poured out for us. You see, the cross is our model for loving, even loving those we disagree with. Jesus is on the cross because he has been unfairly convicted of something, And yet, he went to the cross. He went to the cross for you and for me, for us. For the forgiveness of our sins. I just can't stop seeing the cross. One of the things I encourage you to do this week, stand at the foot of the cross. And lift up those people in your life that you disagree with. Give them to Jesus and ask for how it is that we live one day at a time loving one another. Not looking for the loophole, not just seeing, but stopping and loving and seeing the cross. 
I'm a native daughter of Western North Carolina. Born and raised. I was, lit, I was technically born in Asheville, but grew up right outside of Asheville in a small town called Weaverville. You may have heard of it over the past couple of weeks. And my family has been affected, but I, n- compared to how others have, it has been so minimal. There have been challenges for us to walk through as a family as we have lived out the reality of a hurricane in the mountains of western North Carolina. I have gotten the opportunity over the past 15 days to return home a couple of times. I went home on Friday and um, to help a relative. And yesterday morning, we were at the grocery store early because some things are, I don't know you want to say normal, but they're less abnormal than they were 15 days ago. So at the grocery store, and I don't know if y'all have this experience at the grocery store, it's kind of like on the interstate, where the people you pass going up and down the lanes, like you feel like you need to introduce yourself because you're going to see them on aisle nine next. And so there was this, these two guys that we were going up and down the lanes passing, and they had these vests on. I didn't know what they meant. They were um, brightly colored. We get out to the car, and these two guys have pickup trucks, they have containers, and they've got lists out. And they are divvying up the food they have just purchased in the grocery store to go in these containers. I don't know where those containers were going, but I thank God for those guys who were taking them. As you drive down Main Street in my hometown, one of the churches has signs up, and it's, it's, it's word of mouth as well. They are, they're offering a warm meal every day at 4 o'clock. They have showers available. FEMA is there in the afternoon to take applications. They're just loving each other. I left and I headed up the mountain and I stopped at an overlook and I looked back over the beautiful area that is Western North Carolina like so many other places. And you know, you can't see it from the big picture. It's just beautiful, but underneath it is where the devastation is. I drove a couple of more miles and they had us get off the road and we lined up because they're, they're being very intentional about where tractor trailers are going. Because I don't know if y'all know this, but not all mountain roads are made for tractor trailers. And some of them have found out the hard way. And that's hard. And so there's this long conversation going on between the truck driver and the highway patrolman. Another highway patrolman goes and moves his car and then waves us cars past. And I had this moment. It's not radical. It's not big. It's just personal. And you may be like, I don't even know why she told us that story. But I rolled down the window. I said to the highway patrolman, I said, thank you so much, sir. And he just got this big grin on his face and he said, you are welcome. One of the thousands of people, the the trailers I've passed, what we have given as a church, the way that I have seen God at work in the midst of the unthinkable, where we have loved one another, even in the midst of our differences and our, our different beliefs, has been phenomenal to be witness to. One of the places I passed by on the way home yesterday was an area that the Nola Chucky just wiped out. And there is a church where all around it are trees and where flooding happened. And they were working on that church yesterday morning. They're cleaning it out. I don't know who showed up. Those are like examples from our lives over the past couple of weeks. There are examples in each and every one of us where people have seen us, have stopped, who have loved us, and we see the image of Jesus Christ on the cross, and it doesn't matter what differences we have. You all, we are going to be bombarded. We already are about what separates us. But what brings us together is the love of Jesus Christ and his command for us to go and love others as he has loved us. I hope the Holy Spirit works among us in powerful ways that people may never know about or they may know about.
May we be found faithful in a world that tells us to divide and to look at how we're different. May we find the similarities in the love of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer, you know what it is. You know what you've stirred. You know those things that we are sitting here going, God, but I know you don't mean them that way. Or, God, this is really hard. I've been hurt. The rhetoric is, is demonizing and weaponizing. Lord, I just want the chaos and the noise to stop. Maybe that's our thought. Lord, we bring those to your feet today. We offer them up to you. And we say, God, we don't know what to do with these, but we believe you do. And that you will lead and guide us in the days ahead. How it is that we love those who are different from us. Those who believe differently. Lord, may we see. May we stop. May we love. In your name. Amen. Thanks, Marie. Would y'all stand as we sing this hymn again? decided to start your Sunday morning out with us. Um, I hope that you and pray that you have a great week. Go out and love one another. Go peace.